so dear students now we will uh, continue our next topic from the chapter design of gears so last time we were talking about the uh, spur gears so various types of loads acting uh, on the uh, spur gears that was tangential load uh, dynamic load uh, etc then how we will calculate uh, uh, the module and uh, other different important parameters uh, based uh, upon levis equation using the levis equation so now we will proceed for the construction of uh, spur gears how the uh, spur gears are uh, manufactured in industries now uh, if we analyze uh, the pitch circle diameter of the spur gears so the different types and the manufacturing process sorry will depend upon uh, the pitch circle diameter so if we are talking about the small pitch uh, the gears uh, having small pitch circle diameter then up to some limit uh, these gears are the integrated part of the shaft uh, during the manufacturing process but if the uh, diameter pitch circle diameter is uh, more then uh, these uh, gears uh, are manufactured in the shape uh, of uh, a gear having the web having the web this web so then the thickness of the web web will be the same the thickness of the gear teeth so now if the pitch circle diameter is uh, uh, more larger than this uh, constraint then this web is converted into the shape of the arms and the teeth these gears gears are uh, uh, manufactured uh, during the cutting process uh, they will be on a rim and the rim and the hub will be connected uh, using the arms now we we'll proceed here in this uh, slide we we'll talk about the spur gear construction so uh, depending upon the uh, different uh, size and the application the construction will the gear construction will depend upon the size and its application now when the dendrum circle diameter what is mean by dendrum this uh, uh, is clear uh, from your uh, last class uh, from your last classes uh, you, uh, you know about uh, addendum dendrum etc uh, main uh, nomenclature uh, for gear in your tom and thumb maybe uh, in um, machine design part 1 So now come to the point when the dendrum circle diameter is slightly greater than the shaft diameter then the pinion teeth uh, will be the integral part that will be the integral with the shaft so during manufacturing process when we are talking about uh, cutting of the uh, teeth then they will be the integral part of the shaft but if the pitch circle diameter the dendrum circle diameter is uh, slightly greater than the shaft diameter but if the pitch circle diameter is less than or equal to this constraint 14.75 mm is module plus 60 mm then the pinion is made solid with uniform thickness of the web equal to the face width so uh, we may also say it is the web but uh, generally if we are not talking about the web then it means uh, Uh, the material or the gear will be the solid gear like this one the gear will be the solid gear and uh, the face width this face width uh, will be the width of the thickness of the <coughs> web we may simply say so here the pinion is made solid with the uniform thickness equal to the face width so small gears up to 250 mm pitch circle diameters are built with the web which joins the hub and the rim now if we talk about the small gears having uh, more than uh, uh, the size 14.75 module plus 60 mm or uh, up to the uh, more than uh, this uh, this one 
and up to 250 mm pit circle diameter then we simply say uh, it will be uh, manufactured uh, using the web and which join the hub and the rim the web thickness is generally equal to the half the pc that is the circular pitch or it may be taken it may be taken as 1.6 module to 1.9 module so italic uh, m is uh, used for module and uh, simple m this is general <coughs> this is taken uh, for the dimensions millimeter meter in your notation in the book by rs kurmi now if we talk about the uh, gears having the larger pitch circle diameter so name he is giving here the large gears so in this case uh, the gear will have the hub this part and the rim and in between hub and rim there will be arms so it means here this d is showing the diameter of the shaft so in between uh, uh, this hole here will be the shaft uh, this is the hub and uh, the arm will be of a uh, elliptical section we have already covered in the section uh, pulley section so then here uh, this will be the arm having a taper and uh, elliptical section major and minor axis will be the uh, major axis uh, will be twice the minor axis so he is saying a will be equal to a by 2 this tr is the thickness of the rim b is the width of the face face width or uh, we can simply see here this is the rim head and uh, then it will be the keyway so when we are going to fix the uh, gear this keyway when we are going to fix the gear on the shaft so next the number of arms may be selected from the table given by rs krumier as well as uh, in some other data books so here in this case serial number one two three four these serial numbers are showing these numbers are showing uh, the pitch circle diameter generally there is from uh, 0 0.5 meter to 2.0 meter so here up to 0 0.5 meter the number of arms will be 4 to 5 and uh, then depending upon the pitch circle diameter the number of uh, arms will change 6 8 or 10 so we may select from this table to during the design now have here when we are talking about the hub diameter then he is going to classify it into three constraints or yardsticks if the <coughs> gears are from the steel material then we can simply say the hub diameter will be equal to 1.8 times the shaft diameter if the material is cast iron then we can simply say the hub diameter will be the twice of the shaft diameter and if it is the forged steel gear then it is 1.6 times the shaft diameter the length of the hub is kept as 1.25 times the shaft diameter for light service and should not be less than the face width of the gear the thickness of the gear rim should be as small as possible but to facilitate casting and to avoid sharp changes of sections the minimum thickness of the rim is generally kept as half of the circular pitch or it may also be taken as 1.6 module to 1.9 module we may also calculate the thickness of the rim using this relation so this relation is important relation we will also use in some numericals so tr this is the thickness of the rim will be equal to m is the module and t by n under root so here t is equal to number of teeth n is the number of arms so by this relation we may also calculate the thickness of the rim and we will use this relation in our numericals now the rim should be provided with the circumferential rib of thickness equal to the rim thickness now when we talk about the design of the shaft of the spur gears 
to uh, last case is in last class we were we have covered uh, the design of the spur gears uh, when when uh, we uh, say the gears are uh, having the small uh, pitch circle diameters so now if uh, the pitch circle diameter is uh, larger then we may say we may use uh, the spur gears and that spur gears will be <coughs> stored and uh, will be fixed on the shaft by the with the help of the keys etc so for the complete design we have to design uh, of the shaft for the spur gears as well as the design of the arms we are in order to find the diameter of the shaft of the spur gears the following procedure may be adopted so first uh, we may say we have to calculate the diameter of the shaft so now if we analyze this figure Look at this figure. Then here, uh, this is the pinion, and this is the gear. Now, when they will rotate, then this force W T, this load, which is acting in this direction, so we can simply say this is the <coughs> tangential load. So this W T is the tangential load. Now. This phi angle is the pressure angle, so this W n is the normal load. This this uh, W n this W n will be the normal load, and this is the tangential load. So phi is the pressure angle. Now a thrust parallel to or equal to W n will act uh, upon the center act at the center of the gear parallel to this one. W n this will be equal to parallel to this direction this w n direction will be the same as w n <coughs> we may calculate w g weight of the gears so this w g will be equal to 0 0.00118 into number of teeth on the gear gear face width and <coughs> m is the module square so this will be in newton <coughs> then the resultant load w r we are going to calculate the W R this resultant load, this resultant load, then your this resultant load will be W N square plus W G square plus 2 W N into W G cos phi square root. If the gear is overhung on the shaft, then the bending moment of the shaft will be equal to M into W R into X. So, if we are going to calculate uh, the uh, M, so let me simply say here is your bearing and uh, here this is the shaft, this is the overhang and uh, we can simply say here will be your gear, so then this uh, overhang will be, we can simply say this will be the X and here this, this uh, is uh, WR. this is W R, then we simply say the bending moment will be equal to W R into X. So, then X will be the overhung, this is the distance between the center of the gear and the center of the bearing, your bearing is uh, acting, bearing is installed at this point, your bearing is installed at this point and this is the center of the gear. Now, come to the point, since the shaft is under the combined effect of torsion and bending, we have already covered uh, in your uh, home as well as uh, uh, in your uh, last classes uh, that when the shaft will be under uh, running condition then uh, bending moment and torque will act upon it and this is the equivalent torque we have already covered it so this will be equal to w t into d z by 2 so here w t is the tangential load and d g is the pitch circle diameter of the gear by 2 means so then we simply say that is the uh, pitch circle diameter by 2. Now the diameter of the gear shaft D may be calculated from using the relation of equivalent torque. This is equal to pi by 16 into tau into d cube. We have already covered in SOM or uh, some other class. So then you may calculate it uh, the diameter of the shaft gear shaft from this relation. Now design of arms. When we are talking about next the design of arms. So, then in this case, we may consider the arm as a cantilever beam fixed at the hub and loaded at the pitch circle. 
it is also assumed that the load is equally distributed to all arms. It may be noted that the arms are designed for a stalling load and the stalling load is a load that will develop the maximum stress in the arms and in the teeth. This happen, happens at the zero velocity when the drive just starts operating. Now it means we may say uh, <coughs> the load is equally distributed to all the arms. So when we talk about the cantilever uh, in the, the uh, gear, the arm as a, sorry, the arm of the gear is as a cantilever uh, beam fixed at the hub and loaded at the pitch circle. So here the load is uniformly distributed, distributed to all arms, load uh, is uh, distributed to all arms, then we may calculate this telling load is equal to design tangential load WT divided by velocity factor. We have already covered the value of CV, what is meaning by CV in the last uh, lecture. So these parameters are clear to you. D is the physical diameter of the gear, N is the number of arms and sigma B. This is the allowable bending stress uh, for uh, material of the shaft. Now we will use the sigma B here when we will proceed. Then <coughs> we may also say the maximum bending moment M will be equal to WS into DG by 2 divided by N, N is the number of arms. So then we may have this relation to uh, from the elliptical section of the arms, we may say the uh, section modulus will be equal to pi into major axis square into minor axis divided by 32. So the major axis is usually taken as twice the minor axis. Now using the relation, your uh, bending stress, your allowable bending stress sigma b. So this will be equal to m by z. We have already covered uh, in your song. The arms are usually tapered towards the rim about 1 by 16 per unit length of the arms. So when we analyze, when we analyze the arm, so here this arm will have the taper portion. So it means when we say a one dimension in the major axis is here and second dimension in the major axis is here and in comparison the taper will be the the major axis of the section at the rim and will be equal to A1 minus taper. So A1 is uh, the major axis of the section at the hub and this is at the rim. So hub uh, then uh, A1 minus taper will give us the dimension. So here A1 into 1 by 16 into length of the arm into A1 into 1 by 16 into dg by 2 then you have this relation. Now from these all uh, parameters uh, we will proceed uh, for design of arms as well as the design of the uh, shaft. Uh, for spur gears uh, when, when the spur gear is having the uh, large uh, epic circle diameters. So now in the next class <coughs> we will proceed for helical and bevel gears but uh, meanwhile hereby I request that you should uh, uh, cover this numerical from your RS Kurumi. We have covered this one part, design of arms first per gears. So here, this numerical 28.7 in your uh, book by Kurumi. So uh, this is given in chapter design of spur gears. So example 28.7. So we, you will cover uh, yourself. So he is saying a major shaft rotating at uh, 1500 RPM has to transmit 50, uh, transmit uh, 15 kilowatts to a low speed shaft with the speed reduction of 3 to 1. The teeth are 14 half involute with 25 teeth on the pinion. Both the pinion and gear are made of steel with a maximum safe stress of 200 mega Pascal. A safe stress of 40, 100, uh, 40 mega Pascal may be taken for the shaft on which the gear is mounted and for the key. Design a spur gear drive to suit the above conditions. Also sketch the spur gear drive. Assume starting torque to be 25% higher than the running torque. 
So, uh, first uh, the Zen part, Zen of the super gears, we have already covered in your last class how we will cover the uh, pitch line velocity, uh, then how we will uh, consider the CSE case, so then how we will pick up the CS value of CS from uh, table 28.10 and uh, then how we will calculate the tangential load, uh, then CV value of this one. Uh, because uh, it will depend upon the velocity factor, pitch line velocity is less than uh, 12.5 then the value will be CV this one and then next uh, we will calculate by P depending upon the type of the system. So, here from this type of system we may pick up this relation, so this relation will give you the by P value then you can calculate uh, WT from WT you uh, putting these values here you can calculate uh, B or we will calculate the value of B. Uh, here if we analyze uh, then your M may be given uh, he is going to assume the module M is equal to 6 meter. Let us assume the module M for the pinion and gear as equal is equal to 6 m millimeter sorry. So, then he will calculate B thickness. So, then in actual practice the face width be taken as 9.5 module to 12.5 module, but in certain cases due to space limitation it may be also taken as 6 module. Therefore, let us take the face width as B is equal to 6 module into module. So, from table 28.1, the other proportions for the pinion and the gear having 14 and half annual teeth are as follows. So, then we may also pick up the values of other addendum, addendum work left from table 28.1. So, if we analyze uh, uh, this table, so then this table is given at uh, Twenty-eight point one. Yeah, this is twenty-eight point three, twenty-eight point two. So then this table is twenty-eight point one. So here these uh, three are the systems: uh, fourteen and a half, uh, then twenty degree full, and twenty degree stub involute. Then these proportions, uh, addendum, redendum, and uh, work depth. These all are uh, given here. and uh, then the values uh, of uh, these uh, all parameters are given in, in, this, uh, in this condition. Now, we have uh, uh, this one, this one uh, 14 and a half, so then we will uh, correspondingly we will accordingly we will select these <coughs> parameters, then we will uh, calculate the proportions, these are things. Then now come to the point uh, design for pinion shaft. So, we have covered in uh, now uh, in this presentation WN will be equal to WT by cos phi, so phi will be the angle pressure angle that is 14 into half. So, then you can calculate uh, WN and uh, similarly the weight of the pinion WP will be calculated from this relation then WR and uh, then bending moment m is equal to WR into 100 mm. So, assuming the pinion is overhung on the shaft and taking the overhung as a 100 millimeter. So, this is an assumption you may consider 50 or 40 etcetera. So, then since the weight of the pinion is very small as compared to the normal to WN, therefore, it may be neglected. Thus, the resultant load acting on the pin in WR may be taken as equal to WN. So, here if we are going to calculate the weight of the pin in WP and we are going to compare it WP to the WN, here he is saying it is very small then he is going to neglect it. So, so he is saying therefore, it may be neglected 
thus the resultant load acting on the pinion may be taken equal to W n. Now next is uh, from this one he is calculate the twisting moment. So this equivalent twisting moment uh, from bending moment square plus uh, twisting moment square. So then other parameters the dimensions of the hub uh, are calculated uh, depending upon this uh, diameter of the uh, pit circle diameter <coughs> sorry diameter of the pinion hub uh, dp uh, is calculated from this relation. So then he is saying since, since the length of the hub should not be less than the face width 36 millimeter therefore let us take the length of the hub as 36 mm. So now uh, next uh, is the design of the gear shaft. So, from this W and W G, he will calculate W R and uh, M will be equal to W R into over hung and uh, then T and T E will be based upon the bending moment and from this relation, he will calculate the diameter of the gear D G. These are the basic terms, uh, basic sorry relations and then you will calculate the diameter of the gear hub also depending upon uh, the proportions of your diameter of the piece circle diameter of the gear. Then design of gear arms, so you may calculate uh, from the section modulus, so the pitch circle diameter of the gear is uh, 450 mm, therefore the gear should be provided with 4 arms, uh, so we may pick up from the table. Let us assume the cross section of the arms uh, with the elliptical section, same ratio A1 and B1, B1 is equal to A1 by 2. So then you can calculate the section modulus, uh, then WS, uh, then M. So then you may calculate uh, your uh, A2, A1 and B2, that is the tapering in your uh, arm uh, from hub side to the rim side. Then design of rim, so you may also calculate the design of uh, rim, the thickness of the rim of the pinion may be taken as 1.6 uh, module to 1.9 module. So here we can calculate 1.6 into 6 to this one and the uh, thickness of the rim will be calculated may be calculated from this relation uh, T uh, R G for gear is equal to T G by N and is the number of arms into millivolt square root. So we have covered this one. Now when you will calculate uh, this uh, numerical, you, you solve this numerical uh, yourself and uh, then these unsolved numericals. And then some uh, parameters, some other parameters will be clear to you. So in next class we will proceed for uh, bevel gear, uh, for helical gear uh, along with some numericals. So take care, thanks.